Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we have a very, would, can I call you a very special guest or just a special um, guest? I would, I would be honored, sir. Okay, based just, just on your, your beard aesthetic, you are a very special guest. Ah, oh, yes. On Rift Beards like, and Gear. This is... <laughs> we, it's, it's a, is that the longest your beard has ever been? Um, yeah, because I haven't cut it. And I'm going, dude, I'm not a lot of people will get this reference, but I know you will. I'm going ZZ Top with this thing. Dude, are you going to like go like. I'm, dude, I'm working on it. I told my wife, she's like, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> no, you're not. Dude. Yes, I have. <laughs> Scott from Chernobyl uh, Studios is with us today. And we're going to talk. Well, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of different things. You have a new course cu out. It is out right now. Yep. Link down below in the description, yep. but we'll get to that in a little bit. But I myself, when I do my demo stuff, uh, my issue is always the drums. And I look at drums as I got to get them out of the way. I got to. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I better do these yep. before I move on because I have to. And they're kind of a chore. Um, MIDI packs do help me get closer to what I want, but ultimately it's me deciding what I want where, um, but it's always never, ever as good as, uh, I have a buddy, his name is Nick Pierce, who's been in Unearth for about 10 years now. He is actually, you know, Hey, he's one of my best friends, but he's also one of the most gifted drummers ever. And thirdly, he's a beast at programming drum MIDI. Like he would play. He's so Right. He's so frustratingly good and fast. And if I give him something, <laughs> he comes back with the most like, wow, I would have never thought of that, which I, why would I think of that? I'm not a drummer. And so you recently came out with uh, Metal Drum Programming Mastery. And, Correct. And you're kind of trying to help guys like me solve these problems. Exactly. I mean, you you nailed it on the head, right? I mean, that is literally like that. Like, oh, God, drums. It's like yeah. this laborious, painstaking process that somehow tucked at the very last stage of it. Like, geez, I just, just got to get this done. And so it just occurred to me, like, for example, Fluff, I mean, you're going to do this song. You have this really cool idea. You're going to spend however long it takes you to do that. It could be a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then you're just gonna slap some drums on that. I mean, <laughs> maybe. I mean, I kind of, I, I, I get it. But I was, I was sitting there going because I have done a lot of projects professionally where it's 95 percent rewriting all their MIDI parts because yeah. it's just like, I mean, the, I understand what you're going for here. Let me, let me just redo this for you. Or one-on-one -on -one calls where people are just not. I don't, I don't want to be overly dramatic here, but they're. You can just feel the frustration. They go, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know when to do what or why. I, mm -hmm. it's, it's, so it's like people want to know how to program drums. Because if we just say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, that's all. People right. get that. It's the, right. it's the, I've been making this um, connection. Like we have the iceberg above the water, which is this big, which is technically programming drums, kick, you know, all this stuff. But then you have below the water which would be, in my case, where I, ha I play drums for real. I was yes. a drummer in many bands. Yes. And I learned how to play the drums. So I just, I, all that knowledge you know, just appears in this little peak above the water with whatever my drums would be. And so I was like, I need to help people understand how this works, especially in extreme metal. Because you got high speeds where, where they absolutely yeah. have to be humanized in a very specific way. So all this stuff, you know, I was like, why don't I just do this? Here, here we go. It literally looks like the first couple videos of the course. I'm, I, you're just should wait for me to jump behind a drum kit. And, okay, groove number one, because I'm literally explaining everything about here's a drummer, here's what we do. This is a hi hat. It's on a rod with a clutch and a pedal and a chain. Right. It's two cymbals, you know, and here's how they work. I mean, but if I was trying to write clarinet parts, I would do the exact same thing. I would go to Google, be like clarinet range. How they play. This is how they get the articulations. Oh, okay. So then I would at least have an understanding of how to approach what I'm doing. So and then I obviously would have to go watch clarinet players play, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. So you're saying most drummers don't have six arms? Unfortunately, no. Weird. If I did, I would, 
absolutely use every single one of them. I mean, now you have some, seriously, you have some guitars behind you. So you also play guitar, right? And <laughs> no, so does that, um, does being able to also play guitar because like, uh, uh, my buddy Nick does not play guitar. Uh, but does being, does playing guitar help you maybe correlate or understand kind of the position that I would be in a little bit better as opposed to just going, absolutely. We'll play it like this or something like that. Yeah, of course. And, and the thing is, is, um, I realize that when I'm composing a song, cause I mean, I do write orchestral stuff and piano music and all these other things yeah. that I'm over here on this side now. And then, um, when that is more or less like mapped out or demoed out, I have to come over to this side and put the drummer hat on because right. there are different yeah. ways. I'm, there, I'm just looking at the song in different ways. Cause as a guitarist, you're like, okay, here's the chorus, here's the bridge, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have this chord change. It's much more melodic when you're thinking about it as a drummer melody matters. That's cool. And in metal, you follow the guitars with the cymbals and stuff, but you're thinking about structure and dynamic of the song and how to vary, make it varied. So you can only play a skank beat a couple of different ways. Okay, you right. make it faster, slower, throw some kick hits in there. What are you going to do? As a guitar player, if I was only a guitar player, I wouldn't have the intricate knowledge of, well, I can throw in some quads. I could do you know, a triplet mm -hmm. kick rung. I could do a, I, there's this thing called heel toe where I can squeeze in four notes here. Yes. It's possible, and it sounds cool. Uh, just as a guitar player, I can't play sweeps. I can't do legato stuff. So if someone was like writes me a song and be like, all right, dude, here's a six string diminished sweep, I'm gonna be like, dude, um, no, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So it's it's kind of like that. So it's it's different approaches to the songwriting process. The thing is though, what I'm really like the horse I'm riding, the hill I want to die on, is go from laborious, boring, painful, to uh, musical and creative. It doesn't because it, it doesn't have to be a math problem, right? It doesn't. Right. It doesn't have to be this torturous thing. You can actually, dare I say it, have a good time or possibly enjoy the creative process of doing this. Well, I mean, here's the thing: as when I can, I'm sure you can attest to this. When you got started trying to make music, it probably sucked a lot because there was so much you didn't understand. <laughs> like how much when. When am I gonna finally get it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, the truth yeah. is, you never fully get it. You just understand. Oh, I'm at this stage now. Okay, I'm yeah. at this stage now. Yeah. It's the same thing with drum programming. If you're like throwing something at the wall to solve the problem without understanding, like, well, that's not even the right wall to look at in the first place. You got to be over here. So if you can take drum programming and at least have an understanding of how the drums work, what what the names of the kit pieces are, <laughs> how they're played, right. how they're typically played in a metal setting. Now you have knowledge where you can be creative. And that's like, that's where the creativity comes from. Having like, here's the basic stuff, which I show you all how to do in the course. Humanize, I mean, eight different types of okay. blast beats, ghost notes, rudiments, like literally everything that I could think of. And you just take all that stuff now and now you have your guitar riff and you go, what am I doing? What am I hearing in my head? And now you've made a reference visually what it looks like on the drum grid, mm -hmm. right? And with those connections you're making, the creativity starts to come. And that's r what I'm really trying uh, to do with this course, more so than just here's how to humanize your drums, uh, here are velocity settings. Okay. So to that end, I gave you one of my caveman riffs. That's it's pretty brutal. <laughs> it's it's a caveman. Uh, uh, it's nothing sophisticated. It's nothing. It's nothing crazy. However, those more groovier riffs of mine, I have trouble figuring out what even sounds good or whatever. So, um, I gave you the riff, and yep, and you're gonna show us what what you did and to kind of talk us what through it a little bit. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And you did. And I've just heard it. I haven't seen what I haven't seen the MIDI. <laughs> okay. But I've heard what you did. Not shockingly, it's way way better than what I did. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'll show you what I did. It's not. Uh, I'll show you. All right. All right. Yeah. So this is. Uh, I guess I'll just play it. Let's just. Well, let's play it through first, real Please. quick.
That is, that is, ah, that's good. That's real good. Nicely done. So I think what you were going to say about your riffs is that they groove in a way that does not necessarily land uh, on a downbeat on like an easy two, four type of thing. Yeah. Um, And I have your original one that you sent me just for comparison purposes or whatever. And this was actually very helpful because I was able to understand your idea. And we have this just this swinging groove that's happening. And you can see like the snare is com- is landing on the third beat. Yeah. But these off hits were very important and the kick hits were very important to line up with the guitars. And so what I actually did is I listened to this for a solid 10 or 15 minutes just over and over and over try to trying to get into your mindset of what you were trying to do. And then I started. And um, I mean, I can I can just talk about the process, or you can yeah. have some specific questions. No, go ahead and talk through the process a little bit. I do have uh, I have some questions on like the fills and the transitions and how okay on how you came up with those. But uh, go ahead and talk us through like what how would you so after listening to this, where do you start? Do you start with kick and snare and then let the cymbals right. kind of fill in? Yep. Okay. Right. So I have a five step process actually that I talk through in my course. It's five. Because I found this the easiest way to keep yourself in order of what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing you do is you have to understand what the beat of the song is. So technically speaking, you can have a drum beat with just a kick and a snare. You don't need cymbals. So I just went in and I draw all the, the rudimentary kick and snare beats, like okay. where the main snares are going to hit. Okay, And then I'll go back and I'll be like, all right, I remember that Fluff had some ghost note ideas here and there. Let's go pop these in, and these are the ghost notes um, down here. Okay. Snares. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. The ghost notes are on the same snare center. You this liar. is a different thing. <laughs> this is a different thing. But then I go and do that, and I basically get a rough cut of the main snare beat, right? So then I just. Like I say, get the rest of the snare and the kick in place where I want them to be. The main things, this includes double bass, you know, stuff like that, as we can see here. Okay. Okay. Um, And then the cymbals. So the the cymbals I do after the drum shells because cymbals have two different functions. You know, you got the crash for accenting major song changes or things happening in the song. Um, You can use it like you have done here as a meter cymbal, Uh but typically that's going to be a hi-hat or a ride, right? So let me open this again really quick. So if we look at this, this is our crash symbol, and this is the hi-hat. So the first thing I knew straight away is I can change the dynamic of the song just by taking one of these sections and making it a ride symbol. So we can go from crash to hi-hat to ride. Okay. And then we can do, and then what have we not done yet? We haven't done a china. Well, this is a pretty groovy riff, pretty chunky. Makes sense. We could do, we could ride the china. Why not? So... I already went into that going with three major ways that we're dynamically changing the song just by changing the symbol that we're using as the meter symbol. Okay. Okay. And then we come back here and then obviously we have to deal with the dynamics of the hi-hat because um, it's even a little bit before both of our times, you know, what like drum programming with a module where the hi-hats were horrific and terrible yeah now it's a it's a matter of using the ear to understand well how would this be played so if i i can solo this i guess i do need to see this uh we can just listen to this little hi-hat pattern here instead of just having a one two three four i thought it would be kind of cool to do something a bit more extravagant just bam bump jump into the riff it's it's Um, it's bouncy it's it gives you it sets you up a little bit for uh for a thing, I, l- I love that. That's it, because I my job as the drummer here is I need to work with your guitar part. You know, if we just try to do this, yeah, I could do all the technical stuff in the world just like you could do all the technical riffing, but you put it together, it's like, right. no, it's not working. So the drums are, uh, as a drummer, I am in charge of the pace, the feel, and the dynamics of the song like my job i the mm-hmm. that's why if you have a bad drummer you have a bad song i mean yes we can joke about it as, as long as we want but that's that's the fact yeah. of the matter so, so moving on you know talking about the fills and stuff you had some fills ideas in here like i think i literally kept one of them there's one of them here that i kept i can't 
I think it's this one. Uh, anybody, you had a really good idea where you kind of just um, softly went into the snare to a, to a tom roll. But you did um, you did it a couple times. So yeah. one of the major things of being a drummer is variation. So you could do a tom roll, and then if you want, you go into the next fill. Like it could still be you're like this is pretty standard, right? One, two, three, fill. One, two, three, fill. Mm-hmm. It's like super standard, but they're not the same fills. Right? Yeah. This one is interesting because we have the power one, two, three, but then we're accenting the guitar riff with the da da on the toms. Love that. So by on solo. It's like that That's now good. we're locking together, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving forward, this was your drum pill right here. I just put it on the toms instead. Okay. Right? Love that. Um, there's one transition that I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to ask me about. It's when I started to use the double bass. Yes. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if we listen to, let me mute this actually. And if we're listening to this. It just feels like something has to happen here because... We're, we need to telegraph that we're going to have a change in the song. Uh-huh. Right? So here we are. And that little, this that. little high, uh, sorry, this ride section keeps the intensity of the song going Without the drums really being intense. Oh, that dude, means, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's often actually space is your friend, and because we have these ghost notes, right? Uh huh. So we have the. But with oh. the song. Oh. And the kick drum here. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I just don't want to do double bass all the time. It's not like a metal song, uh, like like a black metal or death metal. Right. Um, it's important to have different grooves. So all these different grooves combined on each other with the riff just makes the song like this much more interesting to listen to. Wow. And same thing with the, the double bass. Because I considered this last, these last four bars, I just treated it like this is the end of the song, or the last eight bars, I'm sorry. So I built up the drums a bit, and then brought the drums back down, and then brought them up for the end. So it, I just approached it in that particular manner. So, um, questions? <laughs> Damn, okay. Uh, this has, I'm learning a lot. You said you referred, you referred to the other symbol as a metering, like using it as a metering symbol. Right. I have never thought of it that way uh, as far as being a meter. I just know, oh, if I was listening to this, having a thing here would be, I've never, refer- I've d- that blew my mind when you said that. I was like, oh, dude, that's totally what it is. And it's totally right. its function. I don't know any of this stuff. So everything you're saying right now is kind of, uh, it's all new for me. I've, I mean, it's, um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and nobody really should feel bad about not knowing it. I don't. I, that's not a. That's not the thing. The thing is just like uh, I just would like you to know it. Yeah. So you understand the role of a hi hat, other than just being like, "Well, I need a hi hat." It's like, well, why do you need the hi hat? What does it do? So like, we yeah. listen to the the crash here. The crash is a meter symbol because we're we're keeping the the beat of the song going here, right? And then yeah. we can get more extravagant. You know, we can do more stuff with the hi-hats. This is a paradiddle. I just moved it across the kit. I actually saw this. I'm like, okay, this lands on beat three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're going to break up the, the sticking. And we're going to come up with this really unique groove. So good. There. It's, just, it's a, such a simple rudiment that you have heard a hundred times before. But if you haven't been able to see it like this, and hear what it sounds like while looking at it. I mean, how would you be expected to know that? I mean, that's not even fair. So, 
Um, wow. Yeah. And okay. then the, the same thing with the ride symbol. Sorry to um, uh, cut you off. There's no, like no. a little delay or something. The, the ride symbol, the bell is like an often ignored element of the ride symbol for some reason. But the bell, uh, very crucial in blast beats because that's where you can get, you know, like, oh, this is the groove. Here, I'm in the pocket because the bell is going ding to ding to ding to ding. And I just use the same uh, concept. I mean, yeah. And then I got some other tricks going on here programming-wise to help it make it sound more realistic. Like it, the main snare is right here. Mm -hmm. But you can see I've sprinkled in rim shots every now and again. And these are strategic because, uh, for example, if you listen to this... I mean, I'm accenting your, your guitar part. Yes. So uh, a drummer would just not, I wouldn't say purposefully, but it would almost be in, purposely hit harder, although he wouldn't, or he or she would not, uh, like, I'm going to hit the snare harder. It would just happen that way by playing music. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so the last thing I want to touch on with the, your your MIDI specifically here is I want mm -hmm. I want everyone at home to notice the velocity of your MIDI is not 127 across the board. No, I don't even think I even hit it once well, actually. Well, theoretically, you really shouldn't be able right. to uh and correct me if I'm wrong, I am again not a drummer, but the theory goes that like you have, there has to be a scale, but like 127 should be almost unattainable theoretically in the real world yeah 127 you are either breaking I mean, shit it could happen yeah you, like you're putting the beater through the kick head type of stuff um yeah okay you can get you can get you can get into the 120s like um if you're doing a pretty solid beat like maybe your groove is around like you're just doing a straight ac dc beat mm -hmm. and then you're rocking hard and you got iron cobras yeah you could hit the 120s for sure no problem um uh, it's usually not the problem with the kick. The problem is usually the snare. Yeah. Um, the And in order to get a 120 or higher hit in real life, you got to bring the snare, like I'm going off camera here, and you have to hit that thing full force, perfectly. Like you have to yes. bring it down perfectly in the center of the drum. Right. Um, okay. Rim shot or not, it doesn't matter. But most of the time, uh, you'll have a height of rise, which is what is a height of rise is from uh -huh. how much travel the stick goes. Um, if you're playing slow, the height of rise will be higher. If you're the faster you play, right. the you know the lower the height of rise becomes. It's just how it works. So if you had a blast beat in here, let's just pretend, just for the sake of argument, this is a blast beat. It's a knot, but it's a kick. If this was a blast beat, where are we at right now? We are at. One tang. I would literally do this. Wow. Okay. To about, to about 67, 70. By ear, of course. I mean, it's not just sure. arbitrary. You never do that. But I mean, this would be, I'd be in this range for sure. I wouldn't be like, oh, 110, let's go to 105. Wrong. You, you're sub 90s, 100%. And then from here, you have to go by ear to where it would make sense. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. It's, it's so, it's like you lower the level more than you think you have to, and then do it again. You know, okay. the, the, the modern productions are kind of tricking us because there's a lot of extra stuff going on. There's a lot of re if sample. Yep. There's samples with sample reinforcement, which I also talk about in this course, actually. Oh. I talk about mixing sample drums and how to reinforce your snare because uh, mm, sampled snares can also be thin mm -hmm. and have depth and, and width problems. So I show you how to do that. But... um. You know the the thing with metal is that you know it's not um, it's not a metal core production. I.e., we don't have as much space to do these big ginormous snare bombs. Yeah. With a lot of reverb, you know, with just like a cannon, because what happens when you do a blast beat? Uh. You know. Your your volume. Goodbye. Goes down. Yeah. Goodbye, cannon. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then you automate, and you got to, it's all this stuff. So, but as a, but the, the main, let me turn these off. The main thing really is, um, even though I talk mainly about metal when I'm programming MIDI, because there's a lot of specific things someone needs to know, 
It wasn't difficult for me to sit down and program these. Once I got the groove, I understand what you're going for. Brain just kicks on and creativity takes over. And then just ask myself all the time, like, how could I make this more interesting? What could I do here? Um, we did this fill already. Let's try a different fill. Or, ooh, this would be cool. Let's start telegraphing the song with some double bass here that we're going to have a major change. And then, uh, you know, I mean, this just comes with uh, practice. I mean, really. Just like with playing guitar, you didn't pick up the guitar and be like, "Yeah," and then just start jamming out. I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a there's a process. I mean, know? I thought I did. But at least, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. You, you, we listen to those old recordings and go, "Did did did I even know what a tuner was?" I'm pretty sure. But at the time, um, you're like, "This is sick." Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> Never gonna get better than this. <laughs> Real talk. S guitars are all washy because yeah. they're all out of tune. <laughs> uh, but but okay. yeah for real I mean it, I really enjoyed doing this and I mean Flop you sent me the files it was like 4 in the morning for me I went to bed I woke up and uh, you had an email before you even woke up it didn't take did. me this long to do it yeah yeah. Okay. Uh, I sent you an mp3 it was just like here's what we did didn't take me that long to do it and it was fun I had a lot of fun working on this one actually it was quite cool dude thank you so much for doing it I, uh, I really appreciate appreciate you doing that taking the time to do that i have actually i'm actually learning things right now which is <laughs> appreciate it which is which is really really cool metal drum programming mastery definitely please check it out i will link down below in the description learn all of these things and much much more you're gonna you're, this was just a little snippet of a much larger course that scott has dude thank you I really no i it's honors of mine. I'm like I'm mentioning off camera here. I've been watching you since like 2012. So it's stop great back to... when I was just oh when, when the shot channel so bad. <laughs> it was so, back uh yeah. It was so but bad. no, I, I'm happy. I'm happy that you've kept up with it and that you've been able to open a lot of doors yourself and Thanks, kept man. growing. I mean, definitely deserved because you've been grinding forever. Thanks, so, man. Dude, uh, it's a super big honor for me to be here, honestly. Dude, please come back. I'm going to send you more stuff. I'm going to send you a salsa beat next time or a salsa. Salsa beat. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see how you <laughs> do metal, metal drummer. Do the in there. Dude, that's the new, that's the next video idea. I'm t uh, the nobody steal this. Metal drummer programs non-metal genres. <laughs> <laughs> and then you react. Yes. And, and then I react to your reaction and then Warren will react to my reaction, which is your reaction to me. Yeah. I love we'll that. Let's keep it going. Reaction on a reaction. <laughs> All right. I love it. Again, everyone, link down below in the description. Scott, thank you so much, and we are going to get out of My here. My pleasure. See ya. Cheers, everyone. See ya. If you like the video you just watched, please consider subscribing. And if you want to further support me and what I do, consider using some of the affiliate links down below in the description of this video. Go on over to Sweetwater, buy yourself something, and help me out at the same time. It's a win-win for both of us.